which is uh, an idea of an, um, a squeak running without an operating system. Mm -hmm. We'll see what, what that means. Uh, we took the slides from last small talks in Argentina. It was a talk of about 40 minutes, so we are going to pass a bit faster. Uh, this, w this work is in the context of our master thesis. Uh, we are working together. He's Guido, I am Javier. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Squeaknos is departs from an idea of Daningas that, that said that an operating system is that something that doesn't fit in language, and so it, it shouldn't exist. That's, uh, and that's what tries to do Squeaknos. Um, the project was started by Gerardo Richarte, Richie, many of you know him, and we tried to extend it uh, with some functionality. Uh, we are going to, to skim a lot of, of, the first, uh, of the first slides because they are an introduction to, an introduction to, to Squidness. We are, we are going to, to do it fast. The, the principal concept is that with Squidness, we don't have an operating system to make all the system calls that the, the Squid virtual machine does regularly. Uh, uh, and the, the main I the main idea is to don't change to, to change the the object engine or, or what is called the, the virtual machine the, the the less as possible so we can maintain compatibility with with the standard uh, VMs and the standard fire and squeak object engine. Well. There are many things that Squeaknose lacked when we started working. This is a big list. <coughs> uh, we tried to work in memory management, and uh, we had to work in hard disk persistency because to work with memory, many times you want to, to offload pages to disk and do some kind of stuff. So we started with hard disk and then tried memory management. And then we went back to image snapshotting, which, is, which didn't work when we started working. <laughs> well, motivation. Yeah, first of all, I, I want to show you a, a, a demo of a squid nose. Please not turn your mouse. I don't have mouse. Please not your mouse. <laughs> I lose my mouse. Do I say? Sorry, I want to recover my mouse. Uh, We have a little problem with the computer. Well, we'll show a demo of Squeaknose running, and, and then we'll, we'll try to show uh, what we have done with memory management. Basically, um, what we try to do is to reify the concept of the processor in Squeaknose and the, the concept of paging. We built a model of paging. Mm -hmm. of hardware paging in x86 
The virtual memory system. Mm -hmm. So we. You didn't see it good loading, but it did. It's a uh, VMware virtual machine. I can't use my mouse when I switch the turn when I turn off the uh, turn on the Well um, I don't know if we will be we will be able to use our mouse so <coughs> I just tell you the, the slides. Uh, the philosophy is to do everything we can in small talk. And every time we have to implement something, we try to do it in small talk. So we build just a bit, a, a small wrapper when we have something to do in, in assembler. And then we call to some method in small talk. That's the idea. So for example, when we handle page faults, we have to handle page faults and we try to do it in small talk. So the idea is we make a tiny call to a C code that uses alien to uh, to call a method in small talk. Do we have it? No, no, no. When we when we get a uh, quick knocks working, mouth will work. <laughs> um well, the idea is this. We need to, to model things with memory, and to model things with memory, we first needed uh, to have access to files, and to have fi access to file, we needed uh, to have access to the file system, and files and file system are things that the operating system gives, gives you. So, uh, yes. So we had to implement support for file system and for files. And before implementing that, we had to implement support for accessing the hard disk, the, the real hardware, the, the registers. Because with that, without that, you can make a file system. So this is, this is an squeak image or a faro image running on the bare, um, the bare hardware. It's, it's not an operating system supporting anything, nothing. Yeah. And you can see it works well like, like any image you, you see on your computer. This, oh. no, it's, it's the same. Um, all these Squignos packages are the one that models the, the different drivers of, of the hardware and, and the different models of perhaps. So this is a VMware appliance? Yes, yes, yeah. sorry running on this quickness. The, the virtual machine that Elliot and Igor explained with an I image, an object engine, and nothing more. The, the virtual machine is a little hack, but only the minimum. So one thing, thing that you can see is that we have method sources. Here you see that the the argument of the method is the name. And that means that we are from a squeak nose reading a file on the hard disk that have the changes or the sources. If, and if, this, if this was the compiled code, because you, hadn't, you didn't have access to hard disk, it would show us print on T1 and T1 next put. Yeah. 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 And all these, all these things are done purely in a small talk. So what file system you implemented? FAT. FAT system. Because that was that wasn't our focus of the work, and it's the simplest one. Yeah, that's but fine. our uh, we try to do a model that 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 can be attached easily to because the model are the streams, the file streams. So we only subclass file stream with a, a stream that instead of doing the, the API call, 
it does a file system uh, a file system request and the file system could be fat could be an ETF, an ETFS or ext or anyone so the only thing any should do is uh, here here are the fat uh, the model of fat the fat classes and if anyone subclass file system you could use the any Well, so thanks to the mouse for the mouse. Mm -hmm. uh, we are here. <coughs> yeah, yeah. We perhaps we are out of time. So the m the most interesting problem we okay we, we are going to the fo to to focus on the the most important thing we we think we. We add, yeah. and is the the image snapshot in a, a problem for Squidnos? And what is the problem? On on the standard virtual machine, the 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 most important code about the image snapshotting is done on C, on Slang, on on on, on low level in a primitive. And the the primitive is based on a property about uh, about saving on files, and is that when when a primitive writes on a file, it knows that the interpreter is not running bytecodes in the meanwhile. So objects are not moving basically. So what it you can do? Sorry, for interrupting. You reserve the memory space enough to keep the whole snapshot. Mm -hmm. Copy the snapshot there, and then use your nice small talk file system to save this region of memory to file, and you're done. Next slide. Come on, please. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the problem is that when you when you write in in a standard squeak, uh, you issue a primitive, it garbage collects, and it gets. The, the whole object heap here uh, ready ready for for writing to the file and so the only thing it does is it issues a call to the file system the file system while the interpreter is post uh, writes all this and then it continues executing okay but in squeaknos as we implemented but the file system is, uh, is, is everybody understand the problem because it's the, yeah. the main interesting part the problem we have is that uh, when writing to files, as we don't have a, an operating system, we do it in small talk. Then, when the primitive issues a file write, what it does is to send a message to write a file. So it has to unpause the virtual, the, the execution engine, so it can write the file. But if if it is unpaused, then the object will move, and the primitive uh, was made. Uh, in a way that it wouldn't work with the, pre with the execution engine working. Basically, the, the image save would, would be corrupt. Yeah. It would have objects pointing to, <coughs> to any place. So, the, 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 as, as, as I said, we call this an atomic problem because for saving files, a squeak nose is not atomic. In, in the sense that it needs to execute bytecodes by co by in the midway. So our our challenge is to have the same result as if we w if if we would be atomic, or, or what we said pretend being atomic. So basically, basically, the first step we did was what Igor said. Uh, a minute ago, and it was this to to copy with a mem copy that is a, a 
an assembler instruction, very common and very fast, all the objects keep atomically to another version of memory, and then in SquickNOS, with our device drivers and our file system, to write that freeze copy of the object heap on a file. And that way we are sure that it would not result in a corrupt image because it, it, it would be the same result as if we save the image atomically. But it has the problem that we have to duplicate the memory and that's not good. So, so yeah, we thought, uh, but not, not we, in, in the last ESAG, Richie went to Barcelona, and while he was doing a lot of stuff, he also thought of an idea. Uh, we could use the paging mechanism to set all the pages of memory as read-only. If we set all memory as read-only with paging, what happens is that if you try to read, that's okay, but if you try to write, the, process, the processor issues a, a page protection uh, interrupt. So it, it stops the, the executing call and calls a, a, a special routine to, to handle that, that page fault, to say, well, what happened? Why is that we ha are having a, a, a page fault? So the idea is we set all as read-only and start trying to write mm -hmm. and re-enter the, the interpreter. But as the interpreter runs, it will write some objects and move some others. Is that fine? Well, so when a page fault uh, enters because it writes some file, the idea is that we say, OK, you are writing to a page that you want to modify. So before that, we take a coup, uh, we, we make a copy of the, of the page, we place it in a buffer outside, and then we let you write. We clear the bit of read-only, we let you write, and so you can continue. That's the idea. So any page that is written while we are, we are writing the, the image to the disk uh, is copied to a buffer, and so instead of copying the whole image to another place, we just copy the, the parts that we need. Not the objects, but the pages. The pages that are being modified in, in, the, in the meanwhile, meanwhile, the, the object keep is being saved. So we have a, a slide to show. And the, the main point is that the page fault handler is handled in a small talk. By small talk code, all in a small talk, not in low level code. And this is the, the image. One that. question. Yes. Garbage collector. <coughs> When it ma all the heap marks all object bits, it means that it will mark all the pages. It will write all the pages. All the pages. No. So you have to you have to set everything as read only after you you garbage collect because the the uh, snapshot primitive the first thing that it does is to make a full garbage collect. Yes, but if you no no, but the incremental garbage collect doesn't mark any bits. And the thing because is that the young yeah. The young part is not being saved. Yeah. So yeah. you have to make sure that, that the full garbage, garbage collect, collect garbage collection yes. during save. But, yeah. but that's important because we are inside mm -hmm. an, inter an interrupt handler. It would be very ugly if inside an interrupt handler we have a time for a gar full garbage collect. So that's important for every interrupt handler to not have a, gar a full garbage collect inside it. So I, I didn't understand mm -hmm. uh, how you forbid garbage collection. Is that yeah. the, the, the VM part, there is some signal to the Actually, VM? we are not forbidding it, but it doesn't happen by now. Okay. <laughs> no, the, no. The idea, the idea we is... We are forbidding. The problem is that the full garbage collector will happen if... The, the, I think there are two, perhaps you or have more knowledge about this, but there are two or three... Uh, points where a full garbage collector start. First, there is a counter every time an uh, um, a new object is created. So 
be assured that we start when, when we save the image, the counter is uh, reset to zero, to zero, because an incremental garbage collect and a full garbage collect is done be, uh, before for every image snapshot in, on every standard squeak or far or uh, any any virtual machine. And the other point is is if we are with when, when anyone creates an object. There is l a little space, no? But if if the object memory have a yeah, little free space, uh, f but that it would not be the case in. If you're going to the limit, there are some extra space reserved for, for the last case. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the idea is that the the page fault handler is a tiny routine. It's a tiny meter, so. It has a high priority, priority so that no other process will execute until it's finished. And it won't allocate a lot of, well, that's the idea. It won't allocate a lot of objects. So it's difficult to have a, a full garbage collection if you have previously uh, cleaned the, the young space. Yeah, we still have to prove that or it's impossible or we have to disable the, the full garbage collector at that moment. But on every test, uh, during the last year, uh, no garbage, co no full garbage collect happens on inside. A and this is typically the kind of thing we would like to have: is uh, the the policy for garbage collection should be available at the image yeah. level. Yeah, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. And what's the problem? The problem, what's the problem? If we set all the image as read only. And then we restart the the execution engine. Then the first that will happen is that some objects are written, because, for example, you have a, a scheduler, so the scheduler has to change uh, the context, and it has to modify the list of processes. So there are a tiny bit, uh, a, a tiny set of objects that will be modified. So in the same moment that it starts, it, poof, it's another page fault. Mm -hmm. It can't even handle the, it can't even uh, execute the page fault handler because another, it, it handling the page fault causes another page fault and so it goes on and we have a, we have an infinite loop, infinite recursion. So, <laughs> um, the idea, the idea is that if that happens, uh, we have we have uh, two two options. We may try to make all objects that we know we, that will be written uh, to make uh, them uh, copy them before starting the uh, the snapshotting, so that we already make a copy. We set them as readable. So if the if the execution engine tries to write to write in them, it's okay. That's a possibility. But there are many objects, and we realize that if you try to do that, then you always have the possibility of another object that you didn't plan were written and generated a page fault. So we we try to do that. We implemented a, a solution for that, but we we still have problems. So we added a second chance page fault handler that is done in C. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, a bit awkward, but. That was the, the solution we came in because it was easy. Uh, it's just a, a small amount of lines of code, so we didn't have too much problem. It goes against Squeaknose policy, but we, found, we think it's okay. So if the, the code says, it's a, this is, this a, is a page, the, the low level page fault handler. Yeah. What? This is the C code that handles the page fault. The, the first thing that is done, it's not done here, is to save the registers of the processor. Then this routine is called. And what it does is this. If we are not in a page fault, then we try to, uh, we, we issue this call. This call is uh, an alien callback. So when we, we come from a page fault that, and we didn't have a, another page fault, we go here, and this calls a small talk method. Hmm? Okay. Uh, and then, if 
we already are in a in a page fault, then we go to we go here and try to save the page in C code. That's, that's yeah, it. what we like to show before finishing is a demo of of a handling of a page fault inside the small dot. So here we I I here I have a a page for table, table entry. We have no much time to explain about it, but it's a structure of that the operating system, the operating system or the the processor needs to to manage all the memory. And here it's verified on a small talk. We, we have an object that that for every page for table page table entry we have a, a small talk object. And we can send messages to it, like set as not present. So now we have a, a page table entry that said that this portion of memory is not <coughs> present on memory. And if anybody tried to access that portion of memory, it should signal a page fault, an interruption. So I create an alien object here at that memory position and if I try to make a call to that memory position I receive here I have a, a halt on a page fault and here is the code to resolve it on a small dot. Now the the the, the page fault is not resolvable uh, yet. We have to resolve it in a small dot. So here I take the post, well, the code, catch the <laughs> correct page table entry for this address, and here is naive, it only set it as, as present because it's on memory, so if we continue, the image should continue without problem. If I didn't solve it, we will have another, I don't know what this is, but it don't have relation with the page fault. <laughs> It's more. It's it's okay. So this is a resume, a quickly resume of our work. And now, well, the image could be saved, and we we, we have persistence on this environment. Thank you.